Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Chef Vic Cuisine. Today, we're making falafel. Now, this Middle Eastern dish is amazing, and it's a great vegetarian option for those of you looking for one. So, let's get started. All right, for the ingredients, you're gonna need a pound of dry chickpeas or garbanzo beans, half of a large white onion, roughly chopped, three to five cloves of garlic, you're going to roughly chop those up as well. Then you're going to need about a quarter cup of chopped fresh cilantro. One and a half tablespoons of all-purpose flour. One and three-fourths teaspoons of salt. Two teaspoons of cumin. One teaspoon of coriander. A quarter teaspoon of black pepper a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper, a large pinch of ground cardamom, and some vegetable oil for frying. All right, so to get things started, you wanna pour the chickpeas into a large size bowl and then cover them with about three inches of cold water. You wanna let these soak overnight in the refrigerator. And they're gonna double in size as they soak. So it'll probably become about four to five cups of beans after soaking. And with a little TV magic, here we have the new large garbanzo beans. You want to rinse and drain these well and just set them aside for now. Now on to preparing the rest of the ingredients for the falafel. You want to go ahead and remove the outer peel of each garlic clove and then just roughly chop up the garlic. This will help the food processor spread out the garlic flavor more evenly. Next up is the half of a large white onion. You just wanna go ahead and roughly chop that up as well. You don't need to really finely chop this as the food processor will take care of the rest of the job. You just want it chopped up enough so that the processor can do the rest. So you wanna pour in all the garbanzo beans into a large food processor bowl. You wanna follow it up with the chopped onion, the garlic cloves, the cilantro, the flour, and then you want to follow up with all the spices. So the salt, the cumin, the coriander, the black pepper, the cayenne pepper, and the cardamom. And now you want to pulse all of these ingredients together until a rough, very coarse meal forms. And if necessary, you want to scrape the sides of the processor every now and then and push the mixture down the sides to ensure that everything is well blended. And you want to keep processing this until the mixture is somewhere between the texture of couscous and a paste. And it should be a wet mix that holds together, but you don't want to over process this to make something like hummus. So once you've processed all the ingredients well enough, you want to remove the mixture from the processor and place it all into a large size bowl. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, and hit the bell icon to be notified when my next video drops. And stay tuned until the end of this video for a sneak peek of the recipe coming next week. And now you want to go ahead and stir the ingredients around to ensure that there's no large pieces remaining. And if there are, you just want to go ahead and remove those large chickpea chunks that the processor missed. Now you want to cover the bowl with plastic wrap and refrigerate this for about one to two hours. So after about two hours, you want to remove the bowl from the fridge and start making the falafel balls. So you want to form the falafel mixture into round balls using wet hands or a scoop. And now each ball will take approximately two tablespoons of the mixture to make. And the falafel will stick together loosely at first but will bind together after they begin to fry. And for an example of what I'm talking about, you can see how the mixture will form a shape, but if you put a little pressure on it, it'll crumble. So this is the type of consistency that you're looking for. And while you're making the falafel, you wanna go ahead and fill a skillet or a deep fryer with vegetable oil to a depth of about one and a half inches. And if you're using a deep fryer like I am in this video, you want to use enough oil as directed by your own equipment. You always want to use an oil that does not smoke at medium-high heat. 
the ideal temperature to fry the falafel is at 360 to 375 degrees Fahrenheit or in Celsius 182 degrees Celsius to 190 degrees Celsius and you can monitor this using a deep fryer thermometer and so as you can see in my video the falafel mix that I have has pretty good structure but if yours is falling apart from its ball form you can always go ahead and process the mixture again and continue to process it until it becomes more paste like and alternatively if it still doesn't hold you can always add one to two beaten eggs to the mix and then process it some more and then it should have some more structure to it oh and another tip for this recipe is that you have to use dried chickpeas from the beginning canned garbanzo beans won't work for this recipe Oh, and another thing that's really cool about falafel is that the flavors of the falafel will change based on the country that it's cooked in with slight variations in the ingredients required. So some people will use parsley instead of cilantro and then other types of spices as well. So it allows some variety in when you're making your own falafel at home. So once you have all of the falafel formed, you always want to start off before frying your first batch by testing one falafel ball and the prepared oil. It'll normally take about two to three minutes per side of the falafel to brown, or about two and a half to four minutes total if you have enough oil to fully submerge the falafel. And that also depends on the range of heat that you're frying it at. So you always wanna stay between the 360 to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. So because my deep fryer has enough depth to fully submerge the falafel, I'm going to fry these for about two and a half to four minutes. And what you're ultimately looking for is a nice crust on the falafel. And then when you cut into it, a soft, just cooked interior. And that's why it's always important to test one falafel before you cook the rest, just to make sure that you have your temperature right. So now you want to fry the falafels in batches of five at a time until they're all golden brown on both sides. And then once the falafels are fried, you can remove them from the oil using a slotted spoon or a strainer to drain the excess oil. And you want to let the falafel drain onto a paper towel lined plate. And here's another tip. You always don't want to fry too many falafel at the same time or the oil temperature will drop and the falafel will end up becoming very greasy. So I would stick to a limit of about frying five falafel at a time. You always wanna aim for that Goldilocks zone of the temperature for deep frying the falafel, as well as the amount of time that you cook them for. So you just wanna have enough time in the fryer for them to create that nice golden brown crust while maintaining a nice soft interior. And I almost forgot to mention that if you omit the alternative egg part of this recipe, this is a great option for vegetarians and vegans as well, and a really good source for plant-based protein. So let's cut into one of these and see how we did. So as you can see, we just created some awesome falafel. It has that nice golden brown crust, and on the inside, you can see that it is just cooked and all of that flavor will be right inside. And now you can serve the falafels fresh with a plate of hummus or a creamy tahini sauce. And just like that, you've made your very own falafel right at home. A lot of people go to Middle Eastern restaurants just to get a side of falafel. And with this recipe, I hope you can bring it into your own homes as well. These falafel have plenty of flavor with a hint of spiciness and a great crunch. And this recipe makes a huge side dish, and I think it's best served with some pita bread, and like I mentioned earlier, some hummus or a tahini sauce for you to dip into. And speaking of hummus, I have a great recipe for homemade hummus that I'm going to release in the very near future, so keep an eye out for that. As always, this recipe and many more can be found in my cookbook, Chef Vic Cuisine, Volume 1, Finding Your Inner Chef, and that's available on Amazon, and I'll be sure to leave a link to that in the description box. Thank you all for watching, and if you've enjoyed this video, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, and hit the bell notification bell to be notified when my next video drops.
and stay tuned for next week when I show you how to make one of the best steaks you'll ever have in your life. Don't miss this recipe. Well, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next week on another episode of Chef Vic Cuisine. And until then, peace.